Hi, and welcome to this special edition of Omni Edition Garden City. I am Dan York, and with me is Derek Fisher from the Garden City Public Schools, the superintendent. Thank you, Dan. And Drew McMeachin. He is the chief financial officer for the Garden City Public Schools. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And uh, the object today is to talk about one of the things that will be on the November 7th ballot coming up along with the council, mayoral election, the library board, and the roads millage. There is also a millage renewal that will be put in front of the voters on November 7th for the Garden City Public Schools. I will let you go from there. Yeah, sure, Dan. Basically, what we are bringing to the, the voters for a uh, renewal is uh, we have a non-homestead operations millage that will be on the ballot uh, November 7th. And basically, it's to levy 18 mills. And this does not uh, impact residential property. And when you say levy, to renew an existing millage that exists today. That is correct. It is, we want to stress to everybody, it is a millage renewal and it is a non-homestead operating millage. All right. And by non-homestead, uh, it simply means that if this is your primary home, if this is the only home you own, if you're a, and which would make up the majority of the voters in Garden City. Correct. This does not affect you. That is absolutely correct. But it is those people that will be voting on it. Absolutely. <laughs> and we hope they turn out to vote. So, so this is for people that own multiple homes, that possibly own rental properties. This is for business properties, correct? Correct. Taxed industry, tax businesses, okay. and rental properties. All right. And since you're the financial officer, this 18 mills that the Garden City Public Schools is collecting now, what does it amount to approximately? So it's a little bit over $2.9 currently. Um, so the 18 mills is assessed uh, or required by... Proposal A in order to get our full state aid funding to assess the 18 mills on um, non-homestead property. And what is your entire budget? How much is this make up of your existing budget? So of the entire budget, we're about a $45 million budget overall, but that also includes federal grant money um, and other money we receive outside of per pupil. Um, this is about 10% of our overall per pupil funding, so the amount of money we get just for the number of students we have, this makes up about 10% of that. So that's fairly substantial. It yes. is, and, and Dan, one of the things is too, this is a result of that uh, legislation that came out with Proposal A back in uh, July of 93, and the expectation of the state is that as a public school district, you bring this levy to your voting populace. Mm -hmm. uh, should this not pass, you know this, I know this, uh, it's important to share this information with the voters, but should this not pass, the state does not make up the shortfall in any way, shape, or form. How often do you have to bring this to the voters? We have this set up for a five-year cycle for renewal. Okay. And this has been renewed prior every time it's been put There's in There's a history of, the of renewal, yes. And you've only had to start doing this, as you said, since the uh, Proposal A was passed back in the 90s. Correct, yes. Okay. And again, uh, people do get confused because there's the Proposal A, there's the Headley Amendment, which both uh, passed at the same time. And uh, remember, your property is taxed on half of its value and then increased proportionally based on the rate of inflation or 5%, whichever is less. And with the decline in property values in the community over the last couple of years, people's taxes did come down a little bit, but also they're, they're getting to the top of that cap and, and it is no longer just, you know, most people are actually paying based on the 50% value of their house and not a lesser amount than that. Um, does every school district do this? I think you just answered that a second ago. Yeah, and that's a great question. Every school district in the state of Michigan is a public school district. So those 500 plus, 500, approximately 525 public districts in Michigan, um, they do bring this proposal. They may be on a different cycle for renewal based on how many years they, they started with. Some are three, some are four many or five, but every public school district in Michigan brings this to their voters. Okay. And, and, and Drew, not only is it for residential properties that are non-homestead, but it's also for, for businesses and uh, in, in, in industry in Garden City? That's correct. Anything that's not a primary residence um, or if it's exempted by law, which I'm not really sure that there are any other properties in Garden City that are exempted, but anything that's a property in Garden City that is not a primary residence would be taxed, just as it is today. So it's just a continuation. Um, the tax will be the same amount as they're getting taxed currently. It wouldn't change if this passes on their, their tax bill. So, so the taxes will not go up for 
homestead or non-homestead, again, this is just a renewal. Correct. This is just a renewal. Uh, and this is one of those things that would be pretty easy to ignore because it doesn't affect the voters for the most part. I mean, unless you happen to be a business owner who is a, a resident of the community and gets to vote, or if you are uh, someone who lives in town and you also own multiple homes in town, it affects you. Correct. But for the most of the people that you're asking to vote, on November 7th regarding this, it doesn't really affect them, so it is a little confusing for people. Right, and that's why, you know, as a district, we are putting out the factual information. We appreciate the opportunity to be with here, we're here with you, um, and then we've uh, also, you know, we put this information out, the literature out, the factual information out uh, with the PTA. We'll be posting it on our website. We'll be doing a mailer district-wide to hit all 11,500 households to share with them this factual information. So if folks want any more information, and we have a short, you know, a little handout that we're using here today, what is the website for the Garden City Public Schools? Uh, GardenCitySchools.com. All right. And you'll have this information on there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if they have questions regarding this, who should they call? They can either contact uh, me in, in the superintendent's office, or certainly they can contact Mr. McMeekin in the finance office. Okay. So really, it's fairly simple. And, and obviously, the purpose of this today is not to tell people to vote yes or no. Uh, but it is fairly simple that it is a straightforward, it is non-homestead, and it is a renewal of an existing millage. Absolutely. And again, we appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today and certainly to share this factual information. All right. And again, most of this information ultimately will be on the city's website, also GardenCityMI.org. But again, you can go to the Garden City Public Schools website for more information on this. More importantly, make sure no matter how you vote, and no matter uh, what your thoughts are on any of the issues, make sure you vote on November 7th. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Dan.